I wanted to know what other clothes, common clothes, we should be aware of that might have uh, shotness other than jackets. Uh, clothes that have shotness, there's a list that's published uh, usually every year. I could send it, I could uh, post it later on. Uh, there is an organization that uh, lists uh, different rabbis that are certified shatnez experts. Uh, there are different, you can, you know, a lot of people could check for shatnez, but there are not that many people that are actual experts. Now, to be an expert doesn't necessarily require you to be a genius. To be an expert, you have to have a lab. You have to have an actual lab. There are a lot of people that uh, say, oh yeah, rabbis, that say, oh, check your shatnez, and they check with their eyes. Unfortunately, that's not, no longer enough. You actually have to have a lab, you have to have the, the right tools in order to check for shatnez. Because the law in the U.S. and other countries um, allows them certain, uh, certain room for, uh, for them to not disclose everything that's in, in your clothes. For example, in the U.S., if the material of a certain clothing or, or piece of clothing is less than a certain percentage, they don't have to disclose it at all. So it could say 100% polyester, but in reality, it's nowhere near. It's 92% polyester, and there's some this, and there's some that, and there's some that. But all those other ones that they added to it are uh, less than, you know, 1 or 2%. So they don't have to disclose it at all if they don't want to. So that means that you cannot trust the tag at all. You cannot trust the tag at all. Now, there are certain things that are on that list that are things that always ha are uh, at risk to having shot. Nez, number one being the suit. A male suit has, uh, it's very common for it to have shotness, specifically in the collar. So anytime that you check for shotness, you'll see that the rabbi opens the collar, usually leaves it open, and uh, checks what it is. And the reason why, because there's a certain material that makes the collar harder. Uh, and uh, they use it, they use shotness for that. So they'll check a couple of spots inside the jacket, on the collar area. Those are usually the common places that there is shotness. Uh, but sometimes it's in different places. Uh, you could also discern uh, boots. There was a uh, problem with Uggs, the manufacturer Uggs, where some of them were uh, ver verified to have shotness in them, the boots. And many Jewish women were uh, like these extremely ugly boots. Uh, and uh, in, especially in the north, uh, you know, in New York, in New Jersey, in the places where they have snow and they have bad taste for, for boots. They, uh, they love these boots, and you had a lot of Jewish women, religious Jewish women, not only having ugly boots, but also having shotness, making a sin for every second they have it on. Uh, so this is a problem. It's a very serious problem. Uh, not the ugliness. I'm talking about the shotness part. Ugliness is you know, a matter of taste. Uh, maybe it's good for modesty. People run away from you you wear those ugly boots. Uh, but anyway, so jackets in general. Jackets in general you should always check. Uh, certain types of pants, certain manufacturers. The list is, is, is relatively big. I can publish this, the list later today uh, or tomorrow on the uh, Facebook page, on the, on the uh, um, uh, WhatsApp groups. And send it to you guys. You can review it. And in there also, you will see on this list that there is a list of rabbis with their phone numbers and where they're located that can check your stuff. Uh, and they're certified by this organization. Uh, and uh, you should only go to those people. You should only go to those people because you know that they have the right tools. They have the right tools and they apparently care enough about this that they go and get certified every so often and make sure that they're up to date with everything. Even though this can be done by the average Joe, you don't want to take the risk with it because Shatnez is one of those things where it's every single second that you're wearing it, Every single second you're wearing it, it's a sin. So much so that Gemara says, if you know somebody's wearing shotnez in the middle of the street, you know he's wearing shotnez, you have to take off his jacket, off of his body. It's not your jacket, it's his jacket. Take off his jacket, off of his body. Take off the shotnez off him. That's how much of a sin it is. It's like fire. It's like he's on fire, he doesn't know it. So the point being is that you have to check. You have to check your stuff. It's, uh, it's not overly expensive per item, but it gets expensive because usually you have to check for a lot of stuff. You know, but look at that list. There are certain things that are prone to have shotnez. There are certain things you don't even have to check at all because they usually don't have shotnez. You look at that list and you'll know what to do. Um, and uh, the point is, is that it's very, very smart to, to do that for, uh, you know, for every Jew because, again, we already make enough sins that we know about. We don't need to make a bunch of sins that we don't know about. 
So that's a uh, that's that's that. And then just to follow up with that, uh, since you said originally at the beginning that uh, almost every tag we cannot trust, so to what degree should we be checking all types of garments? The list. The list tells you the things that, from their experience, they'll tell you certain things that are more prone, more likely to have shotnez, and certain things that it's usually unheard of for them to have shotnez. These are the industry experts. This is an entire organization where they have rabbis all over the world where they know what they're doing. These are the labs, they have annual meetings and, and so on. These are the experts in the, uh, in the garment business and, the, uh, and, and they deal with textile all day, all night. And uh, you know, some of them are regular rabbis, they have keylot, but nonetheless, this is also part of what they do. Some only do this. Some literally have, like in Lakewood, they have an entire lab, a real lab, like uh, where they have, you send stuff there. You ship stuff there, and after so often, you know, they send it back to you. Uh, now again, if the rabbi tells you it's, let's say, 10, 15 bucks an item, don't start asking for discounts. Don't ask for discounts. Number one, you're not paying for how long it takes him to do the job. You're paying for how long it took him to know what he knows. That's one of the things that people forget.